Hey guys, Spear the Greek here. So in my last video I showed you that my sub brand new Subco digital vacuum gauge model VG64 was dead. So I just went to my local Johnstone right now. And God bless those people at Johnstone in Woodside, New York. They really hooked it up. I've been going to them for years and they always do the right thing by me. So instead of me just exchanging my uh, Subco vacuum gauge for, this, for another one, what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and purchased a yellow jacket I just had to pay just a couple of dollars extra and man let me tell you this thing I, I like this thing a lot right now my vacuum gauge is reading at 300 microns and I am testing out this uh, evaporator coil from uh, my previous video over here and if you guys remember my previous video when I had my subco vacuum gauge the lowest it would go was 640 microns that was because I forgot to tighten up my process tube over here and what happened is that after I tightened it up it dropped down to 600 microns but then it wouldn't go any lower than uh, 600 microns so what I went ahead and did is that since I braced these two service ports in the suction and on the liquid line over here I went ahead and did is that I pumped some nitrogen in about 100, 100 uh, psi and I let it run for, I mean let it run, I mean I let it sit for about two hours and two hours later I still had 100 psi and so it was safe to determine that this coil did not have a leak at all so what I went ahead and did is that I hooked this up over here and right now it's at 300 microns and the reason why it wouldn't go down below 600 microns on my uh, subco vacuum gauge is because like I said here I've got to tighten up my hose over here but also, since I'm using Lolo's fitting hoses over here, which you really shouldn't, I mean, you could, but people say if you if you use Lolo's fittings, it does take a little bit longer, but I determined that my Lolo's fittings inside were no good, so I actually rebuild the fittings on, on my hoses. I rebuild my suction, my liquid line, and my yellow line. As you can see here, these are the old ones right over here. Uh, I bought the I bought the yellow jacket rebuild kit for all of those fittings over here uh, at my local Johnstone. You may not be able to see it too good. Ah, here's a perfect one. This came from my uh, my high side hose. As you can see, the second I unscrewed this, this is exactly what happened. Usually, when you have to rebuild your hoses, it's usually the high side hose that usually gets rebuilt the most. But the rebuild kit, you can get at, at the, uh, any local Johnstone, APCO, or any supply house in general. Uh, but Johnstone and United Refrigeration usually carry these a lot. When you buy the new rebuild kit for these, it comes with a spring. It comes with a spring. The Schrader valve cord depressor. And the metal screw with the rubber inside it. The only thing this rebuild kit does not come with, it does not come with the clip, which I'll show you right now, on the hose. It does not come with that little clip, if you can see it there, and it does not come with this cap over here. In my next video, I'll show you how to properly, how to properly rebuild these uh, low loss fittings on the yellow jacket hoses. So once I rebuild, once I tighten up this hose over here, and I rebuild my low loss fittings on all three hoses, I turn the unit on and within 30 minutes it dropped down to 300 microns so whenever you guys are working on a system and it's not going to go below 500 microns or let's say below 800 uh, microns make sure you fix the leak verify that with nitrogen and if after you did that if you determined that your system does not have a leak and it still will go down um, below 500 microns you want to check your vacuum pump making sure it's um, pumping properly Make sure your hoses are good. There's no leaks in your hoses. Make sure your connections are good. And a lot of people don't realize this. If you guys have your gauges and these caps are not on, and if you if these caps are not on, and if you're missing the plastic clear cover on these, and you bang that you bang down your gauges, drop them on the floor one too many times, it could leak out of there too. So, like I said, if you determine that you fixed the leak in your system and there's no leak. An evaporator coil, the condenser coils, or anything. If the system is 100% leak free, make sure you have the covers on, make sure your gauges are not leaking, make sure your connections are good, make sure your hoses are good, and make sure 
get back and pump his blood. Alright guys, thanks for watching.